Calling all spear chuckers, all hail Zulu Ute. Is our aim true? Are we African anarchists or sheep in wolf's clothing? Maybe businessmen in polyester mud cloth. This voice going round says that all is down all around, all around, all around my way. As I wander through Brixton, unnecessarily nervous. Yeah, fear of Brixton, a Caucasian conversation. Chaos is terrifying if you think you own the system. Wondering, just wondering if there's anyone out there who still believes in a Simulation, integration, revolution. Sure. What well, go on with this Ross, Bomba Clock, PSC, or Teeth with Dread? I'm not satisfied they are the teeth with music, in slavery, African things them are run with still. I do white people get dreadlocked. hair before I had my dreads done. I uh, got them done after Glastonbury 95. I saw loads of people with uh, brightly coloured hair and dreads. I suppose I've always wanted hair that reflects what I am on the inside. My hair was really thin and I wanted my body to it. And just because I liked the style, there was no other reason for it. I used to wear my head shaven, sort of skin head style. And um, as my hair grew out, it became a bit of a mess. I really want to be different from other people like when I was working down the street, I was really wanting to get some attention. It's about individuality and being different. You see quite loads of people like on TV and bands. And not just accepting what everyone else maybe thinks. Dreads have given me more confidence, more people notice me. I get quite a lot of compliments, which is, um, you know, you can't deny it's quite a boost sometimes. I mean, you know, I think everyone needs that sometimes. My parents hate them because they look messy. They don't portray the right image for the family. Obviously, parents don't fully appreciate it, but they tolerate my lifestyle. I'm seeing a lot of people about at home in Belfast that had dreadlocks was quite an influence as well. All these were generally white people with dreadlocks. I would hasten to add. I liked it when I saw black people having them. I coloured them in uh, green, red, and yellow because a uh, vague raster influence, but basically because I, I like the colour. As far as it symbolises anything, it doesn't mean that much to me, really. It's just a hairstyle. It's not a fashion statement, as I'm sure some people like to believe. It's for aesthetic reasons. I love the look of black dreads. Oh, you know, they, they look quite cool, so I quite fancy those. You're quite hostile, aren't you? <laughs> I got a right to be. <laughs> Are you racist? Come on, I'm just speaking up for my people, you know. About two years ago, uh, a black Rastafarian guy came up and uh, gave me a bit of sort of verbal abuse about being white and having dreads, which I found very peculiar because to me, I think it's the, sort of the ultimate form of a compliment, really, sort of appreciating the, the black dreads. One idea that I don't like is that people might think I've got a black hairstyle because my dreadlocks are completely different to any black person's. I only wish that I could have hair like theirs because mine takes a lot of money and effort to keep neat. When I locked my hair, I nearly lost everything. My job, some friends, my family. But inside me, I know I'm still right. Even when the police hassle me, I know I'm still on the right path. You know, it's stuck with me. 
My dreadlocks are my link to Mama Africa. They mean everything to me. My mother, my father, my heritage, my ancestors, my statement of being, everything. Greetings in the name of His Imperial Majesty, Helii Selassie I, our Lord and Saviour. I'm Chris I, I'm a Rasta woman, and my dreadlocks are everything to I. In the beginning, there was no comb, there was no brush, and so shall it be in the end. My dreadlocks empowers me, it gives me strength to go through in life. It's my glory, it's a manifestation of my inner self. Without it, I would be naked. I am a dread, because it brings meaning to our life. It says in the Bible that man was created in the image and likeness of the Most High. So I, in my life, don't want to mess with it. So it's best to let it grow natural like your arms and your legs and your heart and your brain. Rastafari. My dreads, for me, is part of me. It's my cultural identity. I'm a black man. This is how my hair grows. First and utmost, I and I would like to say give thanks and praise to the most I, Ja Rastafari. First of all, I and I would like to say I am not a dread, I am a Rasta. And to I and I, Rastafari means peace, love and unity, regardless of age, sex, gender or race, colour. No discrimination whatsoever. Peace, love and unity. And utmost, Ja Rastafari. Well, I guess initially my dreads were uh, they were kind of cosmetic, but um, well, things started happening in my life and things started to change for me. I started to look at it a bit deeper. Dreads symbolise the natural growth of not just the hair, but also of the mind and that bond that keeps us in love. And it's the struggle, what people go through, enhances that bond throughout time. Seriously. I really like having my hair like this. It's almost become a part of my personality now. I absolutely dread the day when, you know, I finish my degree and have to go out and get a good job and chop them off. I think having dreadlocks is it's a bit different from just having a normal hairstyle because it's not something that you just change like that. Because um, your dreads become quite dear to you. I can't imagine ever cutting my dreads off. <clears throat> I'd like sort of uh, to be an old woman with dreads down to my ankles. If I cut my dad's off, it'd be like Samson cutting his off. I wouldn't have my power, I wouldn't have my strength anymore. Because I'm from Greece, like, you get a bit more of attention that you really want to. And you go on buses and like, old women see you like that, think you're a criminal, and they grab their bags like you want to snatch them or something. No matter where you are, who you are, where you come from, um, there's uh, an, an inherent um, need to do the right thing, to move forward in the right way. Um, but this takes something, like, you know, a form of trigger to set it off. Um, my trigger, my dreads. I really wanted my dreads to be for life, but unfortunately I have to go to the army. And that means that in four years I have to cut them, but after that I'm gonna grow them back again and like, have them for life probably. Some of my good friends are white. What's your beef about white people with dreadlocks? The way I see it, we're all Africans, and Africans are generous spiritual people. So if some white people want to have dreadlocks, you know, it's OK by me. Dreads are bigger than race. Dreads are going to save this planet. It's like my great aunt Esther said to me one day, there's no point wasting time hating white people you know, for doing what they did to Africans. It was inevitable. We had so much. You know, who else are they going to steal from? <laughs> what we have to do is to teach them to share. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep till it don't hurt no more. Forget the score. Keep your eyes on the future. You know it's yours. <laughs>